Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Tuesday, October 13th, 2009. Today I'd like to continue with the browser and go through class creation and some basic stuff on editing classes. Before I go there, I want to do one thing though. It used to be with VisualWorks and Object Studio 8 and 8.1 that in the browser, if I right click pretty much anywhere in this view, if this was selected with state selected, notice that the list box works the way list boxes pretty much work everywhere else. If you right click, you're going to get that selection. So you need to be cognizant of that, that if you right click on something in VisualWorks 7.7 or Object Studio 8.2, you're going to get the default behavior in the shared tools between the two tool sets. Now, going on, let's look at creating a new class. Class, new class, you're going to get this dialog box that comes up. You don't need to worry about advanced, and I'm not going to really cover that today. I'm going to create a new class called Person. I'm going to leave it subclass off object, and I'm going to give it an instance variable of first name and another one of last name, and I'm going to hit OK. Now, a couple things have changed here between even the last version of VisualWorks and Object Studio and this one, and that's this. If I look at initialize here, notice it invokes super initialize even though I'm subclass from object. That's because if I look at the hierarchy and I keep initialize selected and go up to object, you notice we now have a default initialize in object that returns self. This is different than previous versions of VisualWorks. So if you're moving code between 7.7 and 7.6, especially if you create the code in 7.7, this is something you're going to have to be aware of. Now, let's go on from there. I've created my class. I've got my two instance variables, first and last. I'm going to go ahead and change this to empty strings. And what I'm going to do is hit Control S. That will compile the code. You can also compile by right-clicking and selecting Accept, and it's only going to be enabled if I've actually made a change. So if I come up here and do, say, a space, and now you notice that Accept is enabled because I've done something in the code. Now, let's go ahead into a workspace and do person new and do an inspect on that by right-clicking. And you notice we get a basic inspector just as a person. Now, one thing I wanted to go through here in terms of editing code in the browser and showing you how this works, let's leave the inspector up and out of the way for a little bit. Move back over here to the code browser. I'm going to create a new protocol category, so I'm going to select new here after right clicking. I'm going to type PRI, and notice it's going to start highlighting and figure I want printing, so I'll hit return. And now I'm going to create the standard print on method, and it's going to take a stream as an argument. What I'm going to do is say super print on stream. Now interestingly if I come back to my inspector and I hit first name here and go to last name notice that it started printing that. Now I didn't actually give them names but let's go ahead and modify that a little bit. We'll type right here self first name Fred and we'll do a do it and then we'll put Self last name, let's call him Flintstone, and we'll do a do it on that. And now we'll deselect off and select again. Now it says Flintstone, comma Fred. So what I've been able to do is created a new class, created some new code. I compiled it with Control S or right click and accept, and I was able to interact with the inspector. So kind of a brief overview of the way the browser works, how to create new classes, put them in the system and have things start working. So that's about it for today. Until next time, have fun with small talk.